All the links I sourced the information in this video from are listed in the description. I'll do a quick version at the beginning and then full detail guide afterwards. If you're running official firmware, update it to version 6.61 and download the update file corresponding to your PSP model, rename the file to eboot in uppercase letters, copy to the update folder on your PSP storage. For PSP Go, always use the internal memory. In PSP menu, navigate to game memory card and run the update. If you're running custom firmware already, you can choose to keep it and skip to the emulator part. However, it is recommended to upgrade to ARC 4 custom firmware in case you're running something else. In case you are updating from custom firmware, download the appropriate official 6.61 firmware file and copy it to the update folder on your PSP storage, download the Chrono Switch app and copy the Chrono Switch folder to the PSP game folder, run the Chrono Switch downgrader from the games list on your PSP. After official 6.61 firmware is installed, download the ARC4 files, copy the ARC underscore 01234 folder to the save data folder, copy the ARC underscore loader folder to the game folder, run the ARC loader on your PSP. After installation, do not fully turn off your PSP back in the ARC4 files, Go to the PSP folder and copy the ARC underscore CIPL folder to the game folder. In the PSP games list, run the ARC CIPL flasher. Download the GPSP emulator, copy the GPSP folder to the game folder. You need to find your lost GBA BIOS file on the internet, copy to the GPSP folder on your PSP. You also need to find your lost GBA ROM files of your games on the internet, copy them to the GPSP GBA ROM folder. Run the Game Boy Advance GPSP emulator on your PSP, choose your game, success. First, check the system software version in your PSP. If the version shows only numbers, you are running an official firmware. If it is anything other than 6.61, we are going to upgrade it. Before doing anything, make sure that your PSP is charged, that your battery is secured in place, and also keep the PSP on charge all the time. You should also know your PSP model. It might not be needed now, but generally it is good information to know. You can find the model number on the label behind the battery pack. However, it is easy to recognize visually. Look for the position of the speakers and the Sony logo. Go to the custom firmware guide page, click on the link, updating the PSP, choose the 6.61 firmware according to your PSP model, hit the download button. After the download is finished, unzip the file if needed and rename the PBP file to eboot in uppercase letters. You can either work with the PSP memory card externally or connect your PSP with a USB cable to your computer and turn on the USB mode. Attention for PSP Go owners, according to the guides, when dealing with firmware, always copy necessary files to the internal memory. Copy our new eboot.pbp file in the PSP storage, navigate to folder, PSP, game, update, and paste the file into the update folder. If there is already an eboot file in the update folder, replace it with our new one. In case there is not an update folder in your game folder, create it. Do not forget uppercase letters. Put the memory card back to your PSP or exit the USB mode. In the menu, go to game, memory stick, and click on the PSP update version 6.61. Wait for the installation to start, confirm the start, press right arrow key, bottom and right to accept, X button to start the installation. When update completes, press X to restart the PSP. Go again to system information and you should see that you are running firmware version 6.61. Back into step one, alternatively, you can find that your firmware version number contains also letters and other numbers. In that case, congratulations, you are running a custom firmware already. You can choose to keep it and skip forward to the Game Boy emulator chapter. However, if you are running anything else than the ARC4 custom firmware, like the ME 2.3, for example, it is generally recommended to switch to the ARC4, which is the current standard. To upgrade from one custom firmware to another, we need to revert back to the 6.61 official firmware. First, place the appropriate create eboot.pbp file into the update folder on your PSP storage. I covered this step already in the first chapter, official firmware updates. Next, go to the custom firmware guide page, click on the link chrono switch. Don't forget all about the safety precautions and PSP Go distinction. Again, I covered this in the first chapter. Scroll to the download section, click on the chrono switch link, click on the chrono switch zip file in the assets. After the download finishes, unzip the file. Navigate down until you see a folder called Chrono Switch. Copy it onto the PSP storage to the game folder. In the PSP menu, navigate to Game, Memory Stick, and find Chrono Switch Downgrader. Click X to start it. Wait until it runs its system checks. Press X to continue. Press X to confirm the start. This process is exactly the same as in the first chapter of this video. X to start, right, down, right to agree to the license. X to confirm the installation. X to restart, go to system information and you should see that you are running official 6.61 firmware. Go to the custom firmware guide page, scroll down to downloads, 
click on the link latest stable release on github, scroll down to assets, click on the arc4 zip file, unzip the downloaded file, open the unzipped arc4 folder, find folder called arc underscore 01234 and copy it to your PSP storage to PSP save data. Back in the downloaded arc4 folder, copy the arc underscore loader folder and copy it to your PSP storage to PSP game. In the PSP menu, navigate to game, memory stick and find arc loader. Press X to launch the installation and wait for the soft restart after it is finished. Careful, right now the Arc 4 custom firmware is only temporary and reverts back to our official 6.61 if the PSP shuts down. To make the firmware stay even after a shutdown, go back to our Arc 4 folder, navigate to folder PSP, find folder named Arc underscore CIPL and copy it to the PSP storage to the game folder. In the PSP menu, navigate to game, memory stick, and find Arc CIPL Flasher. Click X to launch, X to confirm. After the automatic restart, go to the system information and you can see that you're running permanent Arc4 custom firmware. In the PSP game folder, you can remove folders Arc underscore CIPL, Arc underscore loader, chrono switch, and update. They are not needed anymore. In the future, if you want to update the Arc4 to a newer version, copy the update folder from the downloaded Arc4 files to the PSP storage to game folder and run the update from the games list on your PSP. You can delete the update folder from the PSP storage after the update is done. Second option is to use Arc4 Updater. For this to work, you need internet connection, which is not straightforward to set up because PSP uses deprecated Wi-Fi standards. The Wi-Fi connection needs to be broadcasted in Wi-Fi B standard and either has to use no encryption or one of these now already unsafe encryption types. If you choose to modify your network settings to suit the PSP standards, please make sure that after updating, you set your Wi-Fi back to the strongest encryption. Now when the PSP has custom firmware, we can get to the Game Boy Advance emulator. Go to the GPSP page, scroll down to Downloads, click the link Download from Wololo.net. Unzip the downloaded file and copy it into your PSP storage to PSP game folder. Now come to three keyboards. In order for the emulator to work, it needs Game Boy Advance BIOS image file. Unfortunately, you lost your own BIOS file a long time ago somewhere on the internet and it is up to you to find it now. Use Google. Don't forget that you are looking for GBA BIOS. In more detail, it is a 16 kilobyte file named GBA underscore BIOS dot bin. To verify that you found the correct file, open the MD5 checksum page, drag and drop the found BIOS file, and copy the output to any word processor. Next, go to the gamebrew.org GPSP page, scroll down to installation section, and copy the stated checksum to the same word processor to a new line. If the text in both lines is identical, you have found what you have been looking for. Copy the GBA underscore BIOS dot bin file to your PSP storage, to the GPSP folder. Another thing you have lost somewhere on the internet are your Game Boy Advance games ROM files. Again, use Google and don't forget that you are looking for GBA ROM. Copy the found .gba file of your game to your PSP storage to GPSP GBA ROM folder. Finally, everything is in place. On your PSP, go to Game, Memory Stick and launch a Game Boy Advance GPSP emulator. Navigate to your game, press X and wait for it to load. Success! You are now a retro gamer. I'm proud of you. Be aware that while in-game the emulator borrows the Nintendo button layout, the confirm button, the A button, is positioned on the right on Nintendo, so circle on PSP. The back button, the B button, is on the left, so X on PSP. At any point in the game, you can use the save state function, and then every time you launch the emulator in your game, you can hit the triangle button and load the save game state to continue where you left off. If you put your PSP to sleep while in-game, after waking it, simply choose the return to game option to continue. If you found this video useful, hit the like and subscribe button, it gives you motivation to make more. Alright, that's it.